We're going to show how to use the print from rip application in printing a dark garment where we lay a white ink underbase underneath the color graphics using a transparent background. With the new print from rip application, we do not have to start off in Photoshop or Corel. We just have to have the file saved in a rastered format. So what you'll want to do is go to the multi-rip GP interface, go up to the very top, click on file, and go down to create print job. It'll open up the print from rip application window. You'll first want to go over and look at your predefined settings that come with the software when you install it. Since we're using an 1800 direct -to garment printer, in this video, we have our 18-1900 versions already pre-set up. The white cotton ones are for our light garments, and the dark ones are for our darks. So we're going to do our 720 by 720, or what some people refer to as 720 squared, uh, for the color in a white medium density. Let's go ahead and select that. If you want, you can come over to the top where the tab that says Printer and Print Air Area, and this will show that it it already goes ahead and selects certain things for us. The 1800 version is going to be our printer. Our platen size is the same platen size that shows up for the actual um, grid that's running down the side of the screen. You can choose and select from any of the uh, platen sizes that we already have pre-installed in here. In addition, you can go to your print settings tab and choose between the different medias, the different print quality resolution that's available for the color layer. You also have your print density for your white ink layer, whether it be light density for very light garments, medium density for the average t-shirt type material, heavy density for items that are much thicker like sweatshirts. So, in this case, it's predefined for our same as color or medium density. We can choose whatever one you want. If you make changes to these settings, you can also go up and click on the settings button and go down and click save current settings and it'll lock it into whatever you want. You can also choose the number of white passes that you want to do and the number of color passes as well. Now what we have is we can go to our artwork tab and now we can look at what we can do with our artwork. Before we can go any farther though, we need to import our graphic or our artwork. So we'll go up to the top, click on File, and go down to Import Graphic. What you want to do is find out where your file has been saved. And we can scroll through and find our graphic that we're going to use. In this case, we're going to use a graphic from Great Dane Graphics. It's a turtle uh, with some coral and sand and some water. And I want to use this specifically because in this graphic you'll notice that you see some black here. I want to show you the black feature in the rip as well. So we're just going to bring the turtle into the rip application. At this point you can left click on the graphic and be able to move the graphic to whatever location you want to move it. You can also grab the corner boxes and expand the graphic to the size that you need it to be at. So I'm just going to expand it up. You have the ca capability of clicking on the center vertical, which will adjust it down the vertical axis to center and then center horizontal if you wanted to put it dead in the center of your platen. You can also rotate your graphic as well if you've got a multiple platen set up and you want to put more than one graphic on, you can do that as well. Now that we have our artwork laid out, the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and create our whiting controls. The graphic that we have has a transparent background. It's going to go on to a shirt and we need to we can change the background to match whatever color shirt it's going to go to. I'll first start off by doing it with a black garment background. So we'll go ahead and click that. And you'll notice that as of right now it didn't change anything. And that's because we don't have the preview button at the top clicked. We have the color. If we click the preview, you're not going to see anything because we were just printing the CMYK transparent inks down. So what we'll do is we'll click on our graphic and now we'll go over and create our white underbase layer. We're going to 
choose in the drop down box use transparency to detect the background. Since it has already has a transparent background, we'll use that selection. You can adjust the slider depending on how much white ink you want to put down. In addition, you can also choose the slider for the amount of white ink under black. Remember that there are parts in here that has black. I personally do not like just dropping the black ink on top of the white pretreatment, so I like to have at least a little bit available. So we'll go right around 20%. In this case, I'm going to click on the remove the black ink box as well before I create my white layer. And what this is going to do is anywhere in the graphic where it has black, we're going to use the black in the shirt to print with it. So we'll go ahead and click the create button and then it'll go through and create our layers. Now you've noticed that our color layer has started to look a little bit weird and that's because the parts in here that on um, the turtle and down in this area that were black have now been removed from the design. When we turn around you can click on the white button and you'll see the white ink that's going to be dropped down. Obviously it's done in a negative so you can view it. And then if you click the preview you can now see what it would look like. Now remember the fact that the black and the turtle in and around this area is actually going to be the black from the shirt. Now the problem with doing it this way is when we go to actually change it from a black shirt to let's say a bright blue shirt you're going to notice that parts in here don't look correct, and especially in the turtle. In this case, we'd want to leave the black in there. So if we uncheck the remove black ink and click the create button again, it'll bring back our black ink for us. So now we have the black ink here. So it gives you the ability to preview what the layers are going to look like each time. You also have the capability to come down here, use the slider to create your auto highlight layer. It's currently there is no white highlight layer up at the top that has been selected. So we'll go ahead and do that, click our create white highlight layer. And then depending on if there's any true white pixels, it'll print it, show it up. So there's only white pixels up in this area and a little bit down here when you look at it. So it'd be up in this area and then some down in this area as well. You can go to your color settings as well, look at your color settings and with the RGB and CMYK source profiles most users find just leaving it at none gives it the best. If you want to do some experimenting on your own all of the ones that show up here are ones that are located in your systems 32 folder on your computer that will allow it to pull it in. For the output profile, please leave that for automatic select because that's based on what profile to use, based on your media setting, your resolutions, and stuff like that. For color appearance, you have a choice between photo normal and vivid darker. I highly recommend running photo normal for most of the items. Um, unless vivid darker, you'd use for vector objects, big, bold, bright things. You also have a slider as well for the brightness. So if I looked at this graphic and wanted to brighten it up a little bit, I'd just move the slider over, click the apply button, and you'll watch the graphic on your screen just get a little bit brighter. Once you've set up everything and gone through all the different tabs, all you have to do is come down to the bottom corner, click OK, and it'll now take your artwork and put it through the RIP application. You can see on the east beginning that it'll begin to RIP this. In the status message, you'll watch the information come through the status message. One of the new features with the print from RIP application is you'll notice that the file doesn't have to render first before the white ink layers begin to process. And that's because the RIP application treats the white ink layers a little bit differently um, and allows it to go to the pages of printers tab much faster than before.